So what is superior labral tear? Is it that common? Uh, does it uh, really affect uh, the outcome or is it important to address a superior labral lesion? So uh, looking at the anatomy, the long head of biceps is a continuation of the superior labrum. It goes more towards the posterior side than anterior. It's a continuation of the posterior labrum, so posterior superior labrum into the biceps. And uh, it is the thing, the biceps is one which gives stability to the shoulder, especially when the shoulder is put through stress in overhead movements. So like a throwing athlete requires a biceps or the, if the biceps is not good he won't be able to throw so it's inserted medial to the glenoid articular surface thus a subsinual recess is normal we have to learn to differentiate that from a, a tear so what is a slab tear superior labral anterior posterior tear the, the patients complain of anterior shoulder pain, there might be clicking in the shoulder there might be instabilities and these are hidden lesions the, the MRI may not pick it up or the radiologists if they are not actually really trained. The, we had a very good radiology session. I feel an examination of the shoulder and reading an MRI are the most important things than all these things to, to start shoulder work, reading an MRI because you may pick up a lot of things than the radiologists because uh, many radiologists are not focused on musculoskeletal. They may, even the focus people miss uh, lesions like these, a uh, slab tear or a uh, uh, hill sax lesions dimension may not be mentioned, which may be very important for you when you think about the, the results of a, a surgery, a instability surgery you're going to uh, perform. The vascularization, the most proximal part of the LHB is uh, made from the ascending vessels of the anterior humeral circumflex artery and the distal part is from the branches of the uh, brachial and deep brachial arteries. There is a hypervascular area where that pulley is, where it ch changes uh, from uh, a structure which goes superiorly to a structure which go goes inferiorly. It, uh, it, it's in that part of the groove. It's about 1.2 to 3 centimeters uh, from the origin. So if that area is involved in uh, biceps tendinitis or this fraying of that area, that will never heal. The healing is very, very minimal. So you may have to address it um, separately. So the intraarticular portion is around 9 centimeters long and the dia is around uh, five, uh, 5 to 6 millimeters. And that is what uh, Dr. Ivan was using for the DAS technique. That is, uh, you cut the biceps on the top and reattach to the anterior part. That again gives an anterior support just like the interval closure was showing. The, uh, it slides into the joint by about 18 millimeters when the shoulder moves from flexion uh, um, uh, and internal rotation movements. And it twists about 30 to 40 degrees during that movement. So the opening angle of the middle ball, uh, which can reach up to 56 um, uh, degrees. And the remaining stability is provided by the biceps pulley. So whenever you uh, see a, a subscapularis tear, always think that the biceps pulley is gone. Uh, so it is, it is affected. So think about uh, either tenotomy or a tenotis. We'll come to that later. So what is the biceps pulley? It is uh, the, the thickening of tissues. Uh, this fra it's formed by the superior glenohumeral ligament, the coracohumeral uh, ligament, the supraspinatus and the subscapularis, and, is, and the insertion of the pectoralis ma ma major tendon and the falciform ligament. So, th so that's where the biceps curves down. That angle, uh, I said, uh, happens there. So a slap tear. So that is a, uh, a slap tear there into the this triangle normally this triangle should be a, attached to the superior part of the glenoid it begins by peeling or by grinding and uh, uh, it may have involvement in the long head of biceps or it may not so it was first described by uh, james uh, andrews in 1983 in baseball pitchers and throwing athletes and even in uh, high school and uh, college uh, um, uh, athletes so uh, let's look at the classification first the schneider classification uh, it's type one is just fraying yeah, you can probably leave it alone on probably a debridement or a uh, coablation might be enough. Type 2 is the one which requires uh, to be taken seriously considering the age, the activity level, whether to repair, whether to do something more uh, is what you have to think about in type 2 test. Type 3 and 4, uh, you may not be able, uh, type 3 you can probably debride and leave it there or you can do a tenodesis depending on the age and activity re required by the patient. Type 4 is where the biceps tendon also is uh, is stone. Uh, uh, it is involving the biceps tendon as well there. You may not be able to salvage it. So these are the arthroscopic appearances. Uh, type 1, a fraying. Type 2, it is stone. Type 3, where is a bucket handle tear. And type 4, a bucket handle extending into the biceps tendon. Type 5 is when uh, there is superior extension, where the bank cut with the superior extension. That is extending more anterior slap with an anterior uh, extension inferiorly. Or uh, type 6 is an unstable flap tear. 
and uh, type 7 is extension to the middle glenohumeral ligament uh, in the in the front so uh, that might you know, destabilize the anterior part of the labrum type 8 9 and 10 are there 8 is where it extends posteriorly type 9 is a circumferential uh, uh, tear of the labrum and type 10 is two separate the, the kim's lesion as already described by the speakers and the superior labral tear so those are the, the the 10 types of slab but just understand there are four just for practical reasons, it's four. Uh, leave all the others, they can be dealt with separately because it's a bank card with a slab. Just uh, think, think about it that way. Otherwise, you might be missing on the bank card tear because slab is a less important lesion when you consider dislocating shoulder. So um, the mechanism of injury is usually due to de deceleration traction injury from the pull of the biceps. So a throwing movement, the biceps upper end can pull off from the superior labrum. That's how it happens. In uh, the bank, uh, the Burkhardt et al. Et et said when, when there's a posterior capsule which is tightened and this pull happens, it tears more. That is what Burkhardt said. And Grossman, it's supposed to superior humeral head migration which causes it. These are the me mechanisms which are described. So it's mainly seen in repetitive throwing activities, uh, especially overhead activities which uh, cause this slap test. And due to altered range of motion, eccentric contractions which lead on to a superior labral tear. Clinical presentation, there might be a vague pain. They may not be able to... Uh, point, pinpoint or localize the pain anteriorly unless the biceps tendon is also involved. The slap tear is just a deep, vague pain. It worsens over time and there might be signs of uh, rotator cuff dysfunction along with the uh, slap tear, especially when there is an anterior escape. Um, clinical presentation, the pain is again, I said, poorly localized, located globally, more maybe anteriorly or even posteriorly as well because the anterior support is not there, impingement has, happens posteriorly. So patient may be pointing to a pain posteriorly. You may think it is infraspinatus tear, you get the MRI, there is no infra infraspinatus tear. It usually is a slap tear which is mimicking uh, other, other symptoms. Uh, duration of symptoms, the anterior shoulder pain in the dominant arm which might be uh, involved in throwing activities, there may be clicking or pro popping um, act, uh, movements when the patient tries to throw, there may be night pains, uh, weaknesses and instabilities. Multiple examination maneuvers are described and they are important, Love one or two, not all of them, the O'Brien is the one which is most important, the O'Brien's active compression test. Do that, if it is positive, you have a high clinical suspicion, there's something else there. It's not just the, um, the rotator cuff or not just the, uh, the labral tear. Uh, the speed and ergastin sets for uh, tests for the uh, biceps uh, tendon, the DLS test, the, the biceps load, a Kim test, Whipple's wheel, go through few tests. Um, no single test uh, has sufficient sensitivity or specificity for diagnosing slab. But then they tell you that there is something wrong. You look at the MRI pictures more carefully. That, it w that is what it means. So that's the O'Brien's compression test where it was described in 1998. To, it differ differentiates uh, a labral tear superior labral tear from AC joint pathology because in both there will be discomfort here you press on the shoulder there might be pain there and there might be tendons over the AC joint and AC joint pathology but the you can differentiate by doing this test in internal rotation and then in external rotation in internal rotation when there is significant pain or weakness you think about a superior labral pathology and the pain is more inside the shoulder than on the top on the top is more mainly an acromioclavicular joint pathology just learn to pick this up so when this is there, note it down in your notes because the MRI report will come later. You send the patient for an MRI and the report will say nothing about the superior labrum. But then always you have to have a good radiologist as your friend and always try to get the CD and try to le and learn to upload that CD onto your packs if it is there. So that is very useful. Look at the images yourself and learn and you might pick a lot of things because you are examining the patient, the radiologist is not. So you may be able to pick up a slab tear much more uh, accurately than your radiologist. So, and uh, uh, missing a slab lesion, you might be in trouble because the patient will still be uncomfortable. The patient may not be able to throw. The shoulder does not dislocate, but something happens. So it, it might be a slab tear which is uh, uh, affecting your uh, final outcome. So with the thumb pointing downwards, uh, superior force is applied on the shoulder with the arm 90 degrees and 10 to 15 degrees inwards. Uh, superior pressure applied that gives a pain in slap tear and it has to be repeated in supination where it has a high sensitivity. But then specificity is only 37%. Uh, that is a speed test, uh, re resisted active shoulder flexion with the wrist supinated and the elbow extended. 
that's a Yergesen's test where it, it is highly specific. If it is there, it is there. But then the sensitivity is only 10 to 12 percent. That's why we, we say no one test is uh, very um, uh, sensitive or specific. That's a crank test, which is again done by many surgeons. You give an axial load by keeping the hand in 160 degree deflection, and there might be a clicking and popping pain when you do that. Or that is a DLS test for an unstable uh, slab tear. A dynamic anterior uh, force is applied on the shoulder and at 120 degrees and the arm is brought from 120 to 30, giving that anterior thrust. There will be pain uh, which is reproduced in the posterior aspect because of impingement between the uh, infraspinatus and uh, posterior rim. So leave all that alone, learn, about, learn one test which is O'Brien. Just think about low O'Brien when you are talking about basics. So um, MRI, a plain MRI may miss uh, a slap tear unless there is fluid in the shoulder. And one view, uh, one type of view uh, which uh, is advisable to be seen is the, the PDFS image, the proton density fat suppressed or the stir image. Just look at that image, you will pick up most of the pathologies. Look at the sag and the axial cuts, you will pick up most of the, uh, other, sorry, the coronal and the axial cuts. Most of the pathologies in instability can be picked up. This coronal image is important for picking up slap lesions. It may overcall slap lesions. You might think a recess might be a slap. So a clinical examination is more specific and sensitive for an unstable slap tear. Even if the tear is there, it may not be symptomatic, especially for an older patient. So you can just rehab the patient and they become, become all right with, even without a surgical intervention. So MR arthrogram is a gold standard for a slap test that usually picks up most of the superior labral tests. But then you have to differentiate between a, a rhesus, a uh, sublabral rhesus or a sulcus from a slap tear where the tear goes more into the triangle. Here it mo goes more towards the glenoid bone. That is how you differentiate on an MRI uh, image. The MRA, uh, um, MR arthrogram has a sensitivity of around 96 percent and specificity is around 85 percent. Then you have to differentiate whether it's symptomatic, whether it's unstable. That is, that is what clinches the, uh, the, um, uh, the point where you have to intervene or not. So these are the antimal variants you have to have in your mind when you're looking at the superior labral tears, the uh, sublabral foramen or a sublabral rhesus which is more superior or a Buford complex where the, the anterior labrum might be missing uh, from the and, uh, up to the 3 o'clock position which again can be just left alone. It might be just a uh, variant which can be left alone. So that is a sublabral uh, foramen uh, on seen on MRI on the axial and uh, um, uh, sagittal images. So coming to the diagnostic arthroscopy, uh, even diagnostic arthroscopy can give mixed results. You lift and see, you see something happening there, uh, two surgeons seeing that, one may think it is a slap tear, the other one may seeing it is a rhesus. So you have to be uh, experienced and you have, see, you have to see multiple uh, superior labrums, always have, uh, make it a point to uh, probe your superior labrum to uh, see normal variants how they are. Late presentations in slap tears, when the anterior uh, support is gone or it's not working well, the supraspinatus and the subscapularis are put under tremendous stress when a patient is still th uh, doing a throwing activity with the slap tear. That can uh, lead up to a superior uh, supraspinatus tear and a uh, uh, subscapularis tear. That's called the anterior escape. The, the ball is trying to pull and uh, 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 trouble the uh, muscles which... Uh, uh, support the uh, biceps on either side. That is a superior labral tear. Uh, I'm probing from the posterior portal, looking from the superior. And again, I've switched the uh, camera now to the posterior portal, uh, viewing from posterior uh, upwards. The slap tear is being freshened. Um, uh, the uh, uh, superior, labrum, superior part of the glenoid is being uh, rasped. Don't take away too much of capsule, but uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, the cartilage. Cartilage has to be retained as much as possible. I usually use a double loaded anchor there. Uh, that's a double loaded uh, all suture anchor uh, parked in the superior part. You can use a second anchor as well uh, in the posterior part and uh, try not to penetrate much into the substance. Uh, don't irritate. It's a very sensitive area of the superior labrum and the labrum and the biceps have to be good and the age has to be, I'll come to that later, for doing this repair because this is one area which um, uh, probably gives you an unhappy patient. So as uh, isolated slab, be very careful in taking this treatment decision. Don't uh, jump into a surgery for a superior labral lesion. That is how it is done. So I use a suture lasso from the superior portal and you can use a Wilmington portal to place another anchor posteriorly, if the, especially if the tear is extending more posteriorly or posterior superiorly and park the uh, knot more onto the superior surface, not inferior. 
so that uh, the, the bump is recreated don't over tension uh, slap repair you can uh, invite uh, um, uh, avascularity of the superior labrum and that's the anterior uh, uh, not being placed the posterior one is the most important you can also do with a single uh, loaded anchor and park the uh, knot posteriorly uh, single anchor or uh, double anchors. So that's a, a clinical scenario. A 26-year-old uh, computer engineer, um, baller by hobby, they consulted uh, in 2016. The O-brain was painful then. The MRI showed a type 2 slap tear. No dislocations, but the shoulder is unstable when he tries to bowl. I rehab the patient, shoulder rehabilitation with bands, uh, strengthening exercises. He was very happy uh, for uh, three, um, almost three to four years. After that, he came back. After a throwing episode, he came with a, again, uh, popping, which happened. And that time, rehab didn't work. I again put him through rehab for three months, and then he came back. He had to be uh, addressed uh, there. He had a Kim lesion as well and a superior labrum which was uh, repaired with a double load anchor and a single loaded posterior to that and now he's happy uh, another three years down the line but I'm keep keeping my fingers crossed. Rehab after slab, uh, six weeks, um, four to six weeks, you can use a sling for comfort, three weeks in a sling after that the patient can use the hand but uh, no loading of the biceps, no pulling uh, movement and no 100% extension of the elbow. Keep the elbow from 20 to 90 but uh, avoid uh, active flexion of the elbow and uh, progress from isometrics to isotonics and the scapular stabilizers are uh, taken care of in 6 to 12 weeks. There are bands and weight training after 3 months and uh, sporting activity is usually allowed from 6 to 9 months. Again, the slap tears were uh, treated very aggressively uh, a decade earlier. 2000, uh, especially abroad, uh, and uh, people burnt their fingers doing slap repairs, revision slabs for a every age, like 60 years, 70 years, people are doing superior labral repairs, and that invited a lot of bad results for, uh, for slap. And now we are wiser with all the results of uh, the multiple uh, people who have done multiple studies on superior labrum. Uh, there was a significant in increase, and it peaked around 2010. Then it started coming down after one landmark paper by Boileau again. So those are the results of uh, arthroscopic superior labral uh, repairs by Kim in uh, 2002. Uh, about 34 arthroscopic repairs, 32 out of 34 had satisfactory UCLA sports and 97 uh, versus 92 had uh, gone to overhead sporting activities. And uh, no advantage of repairing the type 2 slap tears and posterior slap lesions associated with rotator cuff tears. Uh, that was another stu uh, study which came up in 2007 by Franceschi uh, in 63 patients along with uh, uh, slap uh, rotator cuff repairs above 50 uh, years. And UCLA scores were better in tenotomy group in that study. So, so that uh, is a time when people start thinking about other options for superior labrum. And uh, th there's outcome of the type 2 slap repairs, a prospective analysis uh, by Frey et al. Uh, again, uh, showing a significant improvement in shoulder after slap repairs. So that was, there was mixed, mixed outcome. That was the paper I was talking about in 2009 when Boily published uh, a large series around um, 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 a, a good number where tenodesis people uh, or the groups fared better than slap repairs in persons above 30 years. That's like the talkish paper where 13.5 was described. So uh, a, a line had to be drawn where to repair and where to do a tenodesis or tenotomy. So the multiple studies were done in the last decade for this. And there was failed slap repairs with uh, persistent post-operative mechanical sy symptoms after the index slap repairs. Uh, and the m multiple literatures came in at that time. So that's a paper from Provincia et al. in 2013. I reported a 38% failure rate for a slap repairs with age greater than 36. So he put the cutoff as 36. So age 36, there is high chance of failure. So slap was being reserved for people who are younger. So that was actually what was projected. The, the quality of the tissue has to be good because it's a sensitive structure, unlike the muscles which are repaired, which can get strengthened over time. But a superior labrum, it is just a, a, a covering or a supporting structure there, which if, if uh, not good or the quality is not good, it may uh, persist in uh, or uh, lead to persistent symptoms. That's again another study, poor, poor outcomes after slap repairs, 2009 by Katz et al. Um, poor outcome of slap repair was high incidence of uh, conservative, if there is a uh, slap repair which fails, then uh, incidence of conservative treatment failing is higher. Another meta-analysis, tenotomy and tenodesis gave better outcome ASCS scores. Uh, again, that's another meta-analysis by Hester. 
uh, non-operative treatment uh, gave good results in two out of three patients. But uh, with clear traumatic episodes, the slap repairs, especially with people less than 40, gave good results with slap repairs. And slap repairs are done for people who, when they uh, fail a rehabilitation program. Revision slaps were studied, tenotomy for type 2 slaps, above 50 years, multiple studies were there. And then, what is the next option? If superior labrum repairs can fail, what do you do there if for a uh, subset of people above uh, 40 years? That's where the tenodesis and tenotomy came in. So you can very well do a tenotomy, and um, uh, it's just hard at hardly uh, five minutes job, for especially for people over 40. But then tenotomy has its own uh, differences, because the, the tenodesis has advantages that it maintains the length and tension relationship on the bicep. The bicep has two supports on the top. So if you take off one support, only the short head gives the give the strength, but overhead movements or fatigue can happen as time advances and lateral side of the biceps becomes atrophied. So maintenance of the elbow flexion and supination strength is important for the lateral side. So again, uh, superior or the biceps uh, length is important uh, or the tendon, uh, fixing the tendon somewhere was important to prevent that cramping pain or that uh, the cosmetic deformity because of Popeye sign which can happen. So who should get a tenotomy when there's a risk of infection? Where when they are un, un, um, uh, uh, unable to comply with the post operative rehab or no cosmetic concerns at all, you can do a tenotomy. That is a Popeye sign which can happen when you do a tenotomy. So that is another method. Without a implant, you can do a tenodesis, uh, like a parachute tenodesis. So you cut the biceps with the superior labrum. So it gets hooked in the area where the transverse ligaments are. This gives uh, a, a amount of uh, stability there, but then the biceps can still be painful if, because the problem we said is in that area where the biceps uh, hitches. Can I take a minute more? Uh, so the disadvantage is first in pain due to retention of the, that painful part, which is avascular, we, which we talked about earlier. So fixing the biceps was important. Muscle fatigue and weaknesses were, import, were uh, seen in the subset of people who were studied after tenotomy. And uh, where to do the tenodesis? It can be high in the groove, low in the groove, suprapectoral or subpectoral. So low in the groove is the one, one which is most commonly followed by most of the arthroscopic surgeons. Or you can do an open uh, suprapectoral or subpectoral tenodesis as, as well. Uh, there can be inlay or onlay uh, techniques. I onlay is the most commonly done method. You put in a suture anchor, a double load anchor, you put in a Mason Allen stitch and keep it there. Or inlay where you can drill a hole and using a anchor you can fix the biceps uh, into the, uh, the tunnel which is made. That is the biceps tenodesis, fixing the biceps tendon in the groove. Uh, there are um, uh, instruments from various companies. That's a fork dialect from one of the companies. And uh, that is an inlay, inlay tenodesis. Uh, what I do is I use the word beak to hook the biceps up uh, from the uh, area above the superior labrum, and that is a hooked probe use, uh, used to detach the biceps. The, the transverse uh, ligaments you can see in the bicepital groove. I make an uh, incision there to expose the biceps tendon. Uh, the, uh, the connection of the subscapularis to the supraspinatus uh, need not be violated there. I pull out the biceps from there, and uh, make a drill hole using a bead pin and a 7mm, um, uh, the flower tip uh, drill guide, a uh, drill bit used for um, uh, an ACL is used there uh, to make a pilot hole. And the anchor, the t is screws, uh, are usually uh, 17, uh, 18 to 20 millimeters, so 19.5 in most of the, uh, the companies. You make a 20mm um, uh, 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 drill hole and the that is a drill hole being made. And uh, you can use the tenodesis screw, which has a loop. And you take the biceps in and fix it there. I use, I use it for the younger patients because I feel this gives a much uh, better support. But then studies are coming in as that the, the only method of biceps tenodesis is also equally as uh, effective. Uh, so that's a tenodesis screw which is going in and taking the biceps there. And the biceps is fixed. So that's a patient after biceps tenodesis. He's a bodybuilder and he's uh, happy flaunting his, uh, his biceps after tenodesis. He had a supraspinatus tear and a biceps which was uh, uh, repaired. So the algorithm, <coughs> when there is obvious uh, biceps pathology, a type 4 tear, um, uh, there is no obvious pathology, you go for a uh, repair. Otherwise, you go for a tenodesis. And a full thickness rotator cuff tears, no, no tears. Again, uh, if there's a tear along with that, go for a tenodesis, especially involving the uh, subscapularis. History of trauma, you can think about a slap repair, traumatic. If it's a degenerative, uh, think about tenodesis or a tenotomy. Age less than 40, 
you think about uh, uh, slab repair. Uh, again, uh, more than 40, think about a tenodesis. So, biceps is a common pain generator inside the shoulder joint. Address the biceps also if you want a happy patient, especially with the bank art or with rotator cuffs. Uh, tenodes, uh, if patient is more than uh, 40 years, or a tenotomy if um, um, uh, finance is a concern. A clear traumatic episode, slab repair, uh, less than 40 years. Overuse biceps tenotomy or tenodes gives a better results. It tenodes uh, re uh, restores the anatomy better. The weakest point is a suture uh, uh, tendon interface. So it's not the type of anchor which goes into the bone in an only technique uh, and ha have multiple stitches on the biceps so that doesn't come off. Thank you.